So how is it going now with this pandemic issue there in the States? Um, America sucks. America's <laughs> a shithole. Um, people are, are dying here because no one, these assholes don't take it serious. Totally. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of idiots here that don't believe in the pandemic or don't care about other people. So they're making it hard for everybody that's really trying to uh, make this thing go away. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stupid people in America, as <laughs> you've, I'm sure, seen on television. Uh, yeah, for sure. On the Internet, there's, um, uh, you know, that's all I can really say. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, well, you before you say that A.H. Uh, hey God is not a political band, but uh, I'm pretty sure that it was hard not to talk about politics on your new album uh, if you check the last four years, right? So you have singles like Fake What Yours, which uh, is, even though it's subliminal, is you know that it's talking about something about what that happened in the States. So do you feel like a relief now that the presidency has changed or is still the same? Oh, of course I feel relief. I feel uh, so much relief. Everyone does. I mean, everyone that's on the, the side of good and, and intelligence. Um, I mean, I've never seen anything happen like that. I mean, that was ridiculous. Uh, I could go into details, but I mean, you, you know most of what happened. I mean, yeah, that was that man... Uh, Yeah, I, I wanted to see him assassinated, but uh, I just figured maybe he'll just live and suffer somehow. Maybe he'll get a disease and suffer. Um, I, I truly hate that person. And uh, I, But as far as America goes now, I mean, we have a new president, but uh, they're still just politicians. I mean, it doesn't mean uh, they're for, you know, people that are, uh, you know, poor people or You know, they're not they're not really. Uh, I mean, like, they're just politicians. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So next month, you're going to release your new album, A History of Pneumatic Behavior, which is actually your first album in seven years. Uh, I assume that it was seven years because you were extensively touring for three years and that you have some health issues. But that it felt that long for you? It felt like, wow, it's just uh, seven years already. <laughs> no, I mean, the last album, um, I mean, the touring had something to do with it. Yeah, those things had a little bit to do with it. But, I mean, we put albums out when we want to. The last album uh, took 13 years to put out. Exactly. The self-titled album that came out in 2014, we hadn't done an album in 14 years before that. So... And there was no health problems or pandemic or anything. So we just put records out when we feel like it. You know, we don't go by like the, the record label. Like, you know, they want you to put an album out, go on tour, put an album out, go back on tour, put an album out. You know, we don't do that. We put an album out when we feel like it. Yeah. I don't see the reason to put out inferior product, to, to put out songs that... Some bands put records out just to have something there, just to have a record. You know, we, we don't do that. We like to put records out that we're happy with. So, I mean, the next album might take a hundred years. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. So I think this record was um, mostly written while you were touring, actually, the last three years. Do you feel like touring is a perfect um, time to be recording songs as you are exposed to different people, different ideas, different scenarios? Maybe it's better for for inspiration, right? Well, of course. I mean, you know, traveling is knowledge. Traveling is education. If you if you stay in one spot your entire life and never experience the world or anything around you, you're you're not going to be that very, that much educated, you know? Um, of course, all those things are inspiration for me, you know, other cultures and other people and just everything. I mean, you have to go out and see the world to be inspired, you know? Yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, the I really like the vocals, your vocals on this album. So ah. it's something that you actually 
take care about when you are recording a new album? I mean, do you pay a lot of attention how your sound, uh, how your voice sounds on each record, or you don't care at all? Um, yeah, I, I, I care about it. I mean, of course. Uh, on this new album, I wanted to pronounce my words more. As like I had never really done that on the self-titled album, I started to pronounce my words. You know, mm -hmm. um, people always tell me that my lyrics are good, so why don't I, uh, you know, why don't uh, let people hear them? You know, instead of uh, on the older albums, though, I mean, there was a lot of alcohol and a lot of slurred uh, vocals. You know, so I was still worried about what they sounded like, but I didn't really care how it came out. I guess. But on this album, uh, I tried to, you know, at least pronounce the words more so people could understand the lyrics. Cool. So I think the, um, the cover artwork for this uh, album, uh, uh, it's actually yours and Gary Mader, right? So uh, I wanted to know how much of your input is on this. It was actually your idea to do this cover and he helped you? It was uh, the other way? No, we both... Uh... It's the same way we've always done artwork, except now we use Photoshop as opposed to uh, cut and paste, <laughs> yeah. like we used to do. We used to cut things out and glue them on the paper, but uh, now with Photoshop, it's easier and it looks a little better. Uh, I mean, you got to go with the times, you know, you got to modernize. So um, we both just do the same as we've always done. We look for images that we like that would fit I Hate God. We like the religious uh, stuff. We like uh, the medical stuff. Uh, we just put all that together and we go back and forth, you know, over the, you know, email and just, you know, tell each other what we think about it. And, uh, and at the end, Gary put it all together and, uh, you know, I approve it and, uh, and that's it. And it comes out, I Hate God artwork. Great. I think there are 11 or 12 songs on, on this new album. And I want to know if uh, everything that was recorded is actually here, or did you get something, or did you erase something that you recorded before? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I think there are 11 or 12 songs on this new album. So uh, I was wondering if everything that you recorded is on here or do you have something else in store for next EPs or something like that? No, there was no extra stuff on this record. The last album, the self-titled album, there's a song floating around somewhere that we didn't put on the album, but not on this record. Uh, we did 12 songs and they all, uh, they all ended up on the record. I mean, there's some probably outtakes and things like that, but, uh, You know, we're not going to use those for anything. Right. We, we recorded it. We did a split seven inch with Sheer Terra. Yeah. And uh, we did a Devo song. So that was also recorded. But that, that's that been released on our, our I Hate God's own record label called Take As Needed Records. Yeah, totally. So how much are you involved on things like uh, mixing or mastering on this new album, I mean, uh, are you there just for the studio to record vocals and, and take care that everything is in, in place, or are you actually actively involved in everything that is related until the final product? No, I don't, I don't I mean, not on some albums I go in the studio for mixing, but uh, I didn't go in the studio this time for the mixing. I let those guys take care of it. The rest, the other three guys they went in and mixed the album with the help of an engineer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't there this time, but, uh, yeah, that's how they do it. Right. And on this album, you're coming back to Century Media. Uh, for sure, you've been there a lot of times with different people in the music business. Uh, well, I thought that you thought, you think that uh, Century Media is the perfect people to, to go back to, right? I don't know about perfect. No record label is perfect. I hate record labels. I don't like any record label except my own record label. Yeah. We, we were signed to Century Media back in the 90s, and uh, they basically took advantage of us because we were a young band, and they we signed a 
we didn't think we would be around 30 years. We thought we would put out one record and maybe do one tour, and then we'd never do I Hate God again. That was in the 90s. Yeah. We signed a, a terrible contract back then, and we got off of that contract. So, But those people that used to work at Century Media no longer work there. It's all new and different people now. So we uh, we they offered us a deal. We it's a licensing deal, which means that we do one album at a time and we own the music. So we own this music, but we license it out to them to distribute and to do what they want with it for a certain amount of years. So it's not the same type of deal. Uh, it's not a, a multi-album thing. It's a one-album licensing deal. And uh, it's also there's new people working there now. There's like a couple uh, – a good friend of mine works there, so that's cool. And You know, so it's nothing like the one in the 90s. But yeah, yeah people wonder about us. We talk shit about the old label, but uh, we're signed to them again. But that's because it's different now, and we have a better deal. Great. And now that you told them about the first times of A Hey God, uh, recently was the 30th anniversary of In the Name of Suffering, and you actually released on a special edition on vinyl and other platforms. So are you a nostalgic person? I mean, uh, do you look back in time, remember those days, and want to go back there? Or are you fine as you are right now? No, I don't want to go back. I no, not at all. I don't want to go back in anywhere. I mean, my life is right now. I mean, this is, I, I don't want to relive the past at all. I mean, if I could go back and see a band or something back in, in time travel and see a couple bands and then come back, yeah, I would do that. But I don't want to live my life again. Uh, I mean, not that I'm happy where I'm at right now, you know, so those mm -hmm. That's how everybody's life is. Times change, you know. You uh, you live and you you move on. Yeah, you know. And some of your your early releases are considered are uh, pillars of the American sludge scene. Um, yeah. You are still considered one of those bands. Do you feel like that's your role in the musical scene, being a pillar, being a legacy that strong? No, I hate the word sludge. I, I hate it. Yeah. I think sludge is one of the stupidest words I've ever heard. We're not the leaders of anything. We're just a band, man. We're just mm -hmm. a band that plays music that we wanted to hear. We didn't do this band for anybody else but us. We, we, were, we listened to certain types of music back in the 80s we started this band. And we wanted to hear a certain type of band, so we invented it. We, we don't care about sludge. We don't want to be... If people say we invented it, then that's great, you know, but I don't think we invented it. I mean, there was other bands playing similar music. Uh, no, I, I don't care about the sludge scene. Good. Um, talking about you personally, when you have that uh, liver failure and you have a transplant... Uh, I hope that you are better now. Do you feel like uh, maybe you have to leave extensive touring or touring at all just to be good yourself with your body? Have you ever considered of just recording in the studio and don't go on tours from now on? Fuck no. <laughs> Never. No. I was on stage four months after my surgery. Yeah. I had a liver transplant, and four months later, I was on stage, and we stayed on tour for three years, so no, 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 I would never just be a studio band. There's no point. I mean, I've done other bands that are studio bands, but this, that's just because they were uh, different types of bands, but um, not, not I Hate God. I Hate God is a live band. There's I I don't really care about making records to be honest I I wanna I like to play live. Yeah, totally. And you know, talking about live uh, right now with this pandemic issue, no one is touring. Uh, what Crowbar just announced today that during their second streaming show, they did one in October, 
And Phil Anselmo did one with N minor, which was great on that theater there in uh, New Orleans. What do you feel about the streaming shows? Uh, first of all, I don't keep up with what Phil and Crowbar do. I, ha I had no idea any of that happened. Um, uh, this, it doesn't m make any difference to me. I, um, I, don't, I don't really want to do a live stream. I don't see any point to it. I like to play live in front of people and have the energy there and have sweaty, drunk people jumping off the stage and, and having a good time. Playing in front of a camera seems very boring. It just doesn't seem fun to me. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I have not watched any live streams of any bands. I, you know, I, I don't care about, I, I, don't, I don't listen to those bands either, so. Yeah. So, But no, I've, no, unless somebody pays us a lot of money, then maybe I'll do a live stream. <laughs> totally. So, Mike, just to finish the interview, um, do you feel like, uh, as, you, as you mentioned before, you are ready to record every album when, when the time is correct, right? You don't wait like two or three years. It's when it comes. But at this point that you're going to release this album next month, do you feel like something more is coming soon? Do you feel like you have uh, the energy or... Or, I don't know, do you want to record something soon again? I mean, I've always got the energy. It's just a matter of if we as a band feel like writing new music, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I just want to play live. I'm not really, I don't really worry about going to the studio. You know, I, I, I want to play live. Yeah. And right now we can't play live, so I'm just waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I mean, Jimmy might call me in a week and say, I've got five new songs. And that's if he does, then great. That's awesome. But uh, who knows? You know, I, I don't know. I right. couldn't answer that. Okay. Okay, Mike, thank you so much for your time um, for the interview. Uh, this is a great album. So hopefully we will see you playing in Spain soon. Last time I saw you at Resurrection Fest, not that long ago in Galicia. Yep. And it was a great show. It was actually the you were the last band on on the festival, and it was great. It was a, a great close to the festival. So hopefully, yeah, we had Kiss opened up for us that day. We had <laughs> Kiss open up for us. Exactly. Um, yeah, we we love Spain, so we'll see you back there. Right. So hopefully, we will see you soon. Take care. Take care, man. You too.